Hello, I'm Ron Clark. So, we're going to talk about step five today. But first, a little recap. So, you've been at it for a whole year. A whole year now. This last step was, you know, took a little extra time. It takes more effort as time goes by. Mm. This Each step is fuller. Uh, it doesn't take more effort necessarily, but it takes more time. Each step will take more time. So, the next step takes eight to ten months. So, um, so you've had all these wonderful experiences of transferring your awareness into other things, other beings. You, you have a glimpse now of what life is like outside of the human body. You know, what other than human life is really like. Uh, what does it mean to be a dog? You know, what is it really like? You can find that out now. That's a great gift, you know, a real rarity in the human experience. But, again, this is part of being a human being. This is how so much of our ancient knowledge was garnered. You know, uh, like the herbalist, the ancient herbalist. How in the hell do you think they learned what these plants were good for in relation to the human body? other than transferring their awareness into them and really understanding them from the inside. Uh, yeah, this is the source of immense knowledge, okay? Uh, and you've learned to accumulate the elements, not just pass them through your body, but to hold on to them and... Uh, you know, in your body, uh, learn what the elements really are. And in the next step, we're going to start projecting them and using them in different ways. But what you've done in this last six months has built a foundation for that, for truly using the elements, projecting them, using them to heal somebody, using them to affect change. Okay, this was your foundation for that because you know what it feels like in your own body. And the, the balancing effect of the filling the four quadrants of the body, the four regions of the body, over and over, this is, this is taking you forward in your spiritual evolution um, by leaps and bounds, just that exercise alone has that effect. Um, and then you created at least one personal right. And so, it's mostly the technique here. So now you know how to create a personal right for any need you might have uh, in the future. Um, you can do it now. You know how it's done, you've done it, and it's easy to replicate that success. So, on to step five. Now, this step is very full. Um, we're going to be working with our, the depth point in ourselves and others. Uh, we're going to learn to project the elements in whatever shape, size, amount, we need. And we're going to learn how to take them from the universe directly instead of through our body. Okay? And we're going to learn about pa the passive communication, Barton calls it. It's creating um, a, a link in your awareness to other beings, um, other aspects of yourself. Um, yeah, you get to communicate with other entities 
in non-physical conversation, okay? So he calls it passive communication through the use of a pendulum, Ouija board, automatic writing, things like that. But I'll add to that a little bit of my own personal experience on top of what Barden has written. Um, so, so let me uh, summarize the exercises in these steps. Now, the mental exercises are all about the depth point. There is an error, a huge glaring error in initiation to hermetics in this section. In this, this sequence of exercises that Barden uh, wrote down, he puts uh, transferring your awareness to your own depth point as the final exercise in the list, which means, you know, in another eight months or another six months, you'd be starting with transferring uh, to your own depth point. But the problem with that is the physical exercises of passive communication immediately start out with, well not just start out with, but the exercises themselves, one of the crucial ingredients in that is being able to put yourself in your own depth point. So this means you'd have to wait on the physical exercises till six to eight months down the road and there's not time for that in step five. You know, that just doesn't work. So, in reality, the first exercise with the depth point is going to your own depth point. And, you know, when I realized this when I first came to step five exercises, I thought about it a lot, you know, how to make this work. So, what I decided is I just went for my own depth point first and then exploring the depth point of other things. And I found that that works very well because it's your own depth point that really brings an understanding of what the depth point is in any form. Um, so, it makes more sense really to start with the depth point of your own depth point than it does to start with the depth point of something else. So that's where we'll start here. We start with venturing into your own depth point and understanding what the depth point is. It's not, it's not really a spatial location. It's a philosophical location. Um, so the exercises go through your own depth point and then experimenting with the depth point of several objects, inanimate objects, then we go to animate objects, and then plants and trees and shrubs, and then animals, and then humans, and then experimenting with the depth point from afar. So you have a friend in another town, you want to uh, explore their depth point, how to do that? Um, and it's all very straightforward. It's, it's, it's based on the transference of awareness, which of course you've already covered in step four. So it's, it's not a big step, in other words. It's just the beginning with your own depth point is a very introspective experience. And uh, you find that deep stillness within yourself. Um, where the universe expands beyond yourself infinitely. And you really feel yourself as an infinitely finite point of being within you. That is just pure being. There's no thinking, no feeling. It is just pure being, pure perception. Okay? Um, then the astral exercises are about projecting the elements. Uh, and you will project all of the elements. Now you, you have a choice here. You can go through the elements one at a time. Uh, so you work with the fire element until you've mastered the projection of that. Then you work with the air element until you've mastered its projection, etc. Or you can work with all four elements in 
each exercise. So you project, you, you know, you work at projecting fire element, mm -hmm. then the air element, mm -hmm. then the water, and then the earth, all in one exercise session. Mm -hmm. So I've designed it so you do each element separately. You map to the fire element, then the air element, then the earth, water and earth. Um, but, you know, uh, it, that choice will be yours. Um, I suggest at least you start this way, and if it doesn't seem to fit for you, you know, mix it up, you know, it's your choice. Um, so you work at different ways of projecting the element, first through the solar plexus and a whole body accumulation, then project it through the solar plexus, take it back to the solar plexus and dissipate the element. Um, you'll be filling your room with the element. Um, maybe leaving it for a while to see what happens. Um, then eventually you'll be uh, projecting different shapes, uh, projecting a, a, a spherical shape of the element, a square of the element, things like this. These are just exercises that, that develop certain muscles you will need for projecting the elements. Um, then, uh, let's see, where do we end with... Ah, then the exercises at the end are about bypassing the body. So just condensing the element into a shape floating in front of you in a room. Filling a room with the element directly from the universe, things like that. And then the physical exercises are all about the passive communication. And essentially this is... Um, what's called exteriorizing your hand, where my hand is sitting right here, physical, astral, mental, all happening right here, but then I will move my astromental hand off to the side, and that leaves just the empty physical hand there, which you then go into a trance state, which is essentially your own depth point, and you invite communication and uh, various entities will use your hand, basically. Uh, so, it's, that's very interesting, and it is mostly just for your own edification, um, but the first task is making contact with what Varden calls your um, guardian genius. Um, now, I have a different terminology myself, a uh, slightly different conceptualization. I call it the greater self, and I recognize it as a, um, a more inclusive level of my own self-awareness. Uh, and this is the level of self that I am contacting as my guardian genius, or holy guardian angel. Um, these are sort of Victorian, uh, European conceptualizations um, that don't work for me, personally. Um, but, it's what's in initiation in the Hermetic, so I will be talking in those terms. So, we will get down to the monthly, I've divided it by months, it's 8 to 10 months. Now, this step, more than the, the past steps, um, that uh, time amount is very fluid. You may find these exercises very easy. They should basically be easy, considering the work you have already done. There's really nothing new here, except for the passive communication. Well, the depth point, yeah. <laughs> There's no really new techniques here that you haven't already uh, used with the vital energy, for example. So, get down to the monthlies. Okay, for the, the whole of step five, we're talking now for the next eight to ten months, you must continue with your morning and evening routines, you know, the, uh, the, 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 the dry brushing, cold showering, cold bathing, uh, uh, rough drying and a bit of exercise every morning, waking up with your affirmation, going to sleep with your affirmation, doing your exercises, 
your hermetic exercises twice a day. And the, the amount of time that these exercises um, will be taking will most likely be longer um, than they have in the past. Some of these exercises take a little bit longer, <laughs> that's all I can say. But that's a real fluid thing uh, and very natural progression. Okay, and you must continue with the character transformation. You must always continue with the character transformation. And, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> you must continue to be a magician, to use the um, powers and abilities and techniques you have already learned. <coughs> You know, is the, uh, the work with the vital energy, the uh, constant self-awareness, um, the uh, uh, transference of awareness, etc. All these things must be used. And you will, of course, every day be doing thought control, single-pointedness, and vacancy of mind, even if only for a brief uh, about amount of time. Now, for this specific step, you need to begin with med specific meditations, and you should use your uh, period of contemplation for these meditations, at least in the beginning. You need to meditate on your depth point. Okay, you need to meditate on the concept of the depth point, and as you become more familiar with it, Meditate on the uh, consequences, uh, the ramifications of the depth point. And also, meditations on the nature of infinity. This is um, very pertinent for the depth point. The depth point has a lot to do with infinite, um, with infinity. Okay? Um, and... Uh, in relation to the passive communication with your guardian genius, as I said, for me this is the greater self. Now the greater self is always present, it always has been present for you, and it's most recognizable as the voice of your conscience. That little voice inside that tells you instantly if something is right or it's wrong if this is something that's good for you or bad for you. You always know whether you're willing to admit it or not or even recognize it um, is the question. So, throughout step five, you've got to actively, actively listen for that voice of your conscience and get used to, get accustomed to that level of communication with your greater self. We don't only have to approach this level of ourself through a passive communication, right, through a trance and using a, uh, a pendulum or a Ouija board or automatic writing, whatever. We don't have to approach it that way. We are constantly in contact with this aspect, this level of our self, and it's m the most reliable, um, especially in, in relation to ourselves, information. It's not reliable for information about others or situations, you know, the future, uh, etc. It is the absolute authority on everything concerning ourself. And this is the kind of guidance we really need, you know? <laughs> That's the important kind of guidance. So listen for that voice and listen to that voice. And the thing is, you have to obey that voice. The more you listen for it and obey what it says, what it tells you, the more reliable that type of communication will be. The more open those avenues of communication with your higher, uh, higher aspect of your awareness will be. 
Okay? So, that sort of sets the framework for this uh, step. So, in your first month, you will do the daily and the morning and uh, the... Um, Okay, <clears throat> you know, at the beginning of each of your uh, hermetic exercise sessions, you will start with the thought control, the checking in with your brain, the single-pointedness, focus, the contemplation, and then a period of vacancy of mind. Don't forget that vacancy of mind. Every day you want to visit the vacancy of mind. And I'm sure by now it has morphed into something very different um, than it was originally, okay? That's a very personal journey that only you can take, you know, I can't even describe it to you. Um, so, so the first exercise is going to be the transference of awareness into your own depth point. Now, Barden gives a very good explanation of what that means, okay? You might have to check the uh, later stages of uh, what he wrote on the uh, mental exercises of step five in order to get, you know, the details of the technique he's using. But just read the whole uh, mental section and you'll understand what it means to find your depth point. Now, as I said, this is not a spatial location. Even though Barden... Uh, couches it in these words that give the impression of, you know, a spatial uh, um, place at the exact center, um, etc. It's a conceptual, um, philosophical uh, location. Okay? And then you start work with the fire element and accumulating the fire element uh, or projecting the fire element. It starts with accumulation, poor breathing through the whole body and then it's projected through the solar plexus into the room around you. And you keep doing that until you build up a good charge in your room um, and then you dissipate it by drawing it back into yourself and exhaling it through your whole body. Okay, take it in the body, project it out, take it back to the body, and then exhale it, basically. Um, and eventually, you want to be a dynamic accumulation, which you're used to in your body, but now it's going to be external. And so you want to eventually feel the effects of your accumulation uh, externally, so you will feel the warmth on your skin, on your body when you have uh, filled your room with the fire element. You will feel cold when you fill your room with the f water element, etc. Okay? Um, and there is no seven times to thirty times uh, sort of limit here because you know the element and just continue until it feels like you have enough of an accumulation and then disperse it. And you know, you do want to stretch your limits as you go, but that's not the real focus here. The real focus is getting used to this technique of projecting the elements, in this case, through the solar plexus. Okay, now, <clears throat> the physical exercises uh, for, this month, for this month are preparatory for the uh, passive communication. And you'll be going through this process of called levitating the fingers in your hand. You start out with an accumulation of the vital energy in your hand. And this is there to um, empower uh, uh, um, a thought, basically. Your thought being that it is your will 
that is responsible for making your hand move, not the muscles. So what you need to do here is break that binding in the habitual parts of your brain that, that ap approach uh, any movement as being, as involving your muscles. Uh, it's sort of hard to explain here. Um, ordinarily when I move my finger, you know, I recognize that it is my muscles that are contracting and moving my fingers. But here the idea is you want to convince yourself um, with this affirmation that it is your mind that is totally responsible for lifting your fingers. And once you've done that, um, what you do is you um, accumulate the air element in one of your fingers, say your forefinger, accumulate the air element, and then, you know, it has a levitating effect. So you're freeing your finger, the physical weight of your finger is being freed uh, of gravity, basically. And then, with your mind alone, you raise your finger. And then you let it drop. Okay, so you want to, you want to break that connection with the, the, the need for muscular activity to move your finger. And leave it up to your will alone. Because in the presence of the air element, the only thing keeping your finger down is your will. And it would be the only thing to ra raise your finger would be your will. Okay. Um, so, that's the first month. You have to, well, you have to in this month uh, work at raising one finger, all your fingers, move on to the other hand, raise one finger, all your fingers in the other hand, raise your hands, raise your arms, you know, you can, the ultimate, uh, uh, the ultimate uh, extension of this exercise, if you did it for a decade or two consistently, would be the ability to levitate, in theory, okay? So, that's month one. Month two, uh, okay, the mental exercise is again transferring your awareness into your own depth point. We do that, I think I have it down for two months straight. Uh, yeah, for two months you're doing nothing but going into your own depth point and deepening that experience. Yeah, deepening the experience. The more time you spend there during this period, the better off you will be. Not only understanding depth point, and depth point in everything, but exploring your depth point. The depth point is a place of safety, of seclusion, of quiet, of, um, yeah, it's just a nurturing. From the depth point, you can gain a totally different perspective on your life and a different, um, a different ability to control uh, yourself and what happens in your life. Because you're here at the center and you can reach out and change things from the, that center point, that depth point. Um, you can directly change things in your character from your depth point. It's a, place of great power in terms of self-transformation. Okay, then we... Ah, now... We're... Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Ah. Excuse me. <laughs> um, this month we're again working with the fire element and we're again projecting it into the room through the solar plexus. 
But this time we're going to experiment with leaving our room charged with the fire element. Go away from the room for a time and then come back to it. And we see then what happens to our charge, if anything. Um, just what the state of our room is after having held on to this charge for this period of time, etc. It's very, it's a good learning curve. And then we dissipate it from the room. We don't want to leave it forever in the room, at least not at this point, um, for the purpose of these exercises. It's just not a good idea. Then you're going to go outside and practice the same thing, except now you're going to have to confine your accumulation of the element. So you want to confine the accumulation of the element to a certain area, a certain position, and, you know, accumulate and dynamic accumulation of the element, and then bring it back into your body and release it until you get used to that. And it's about here setting the parameters of your accumulation and learning to control its parameters. There's nothing really defined about the parameters you're setting up. It's totally up to you. It can surround you or it can exist, um, you know, separate from you. Uh, it can extend four miles or it can only be, you know, a meter. Uh, so, again, it's up to you, but you have to practice that and get used to that ability. And now, with the passive communication here in month two, we get down to the actual exercises for the passive communication. And that has to do with what I said earlier about exteriorizing your hand. You create this empty uh, physical shell of a hand that has none of your will in it. None of your awareness, none of your willing is in your hand. Okay? And then you enter your depth point. And this does what Barden called, puts you in a trance state. It is a state that is devoid of any willing, any material willing, okay? So, you're in a trance state, sort of a, a, a blank slate, and your hand is completely empty, and you call out in your death point to your guardian genius, and ask them to move uh, your hand, to answer questions, essentially. In this exercise, your hand is propped up and you're holding a pendulum. This ex first exercise is with a pendulum. And that can be pretty much anything that dangles from a string. And uh, he has it where you put a glass on either side of the pendulum and, you know, ask your guardian, to move the pendulum, your hand, basically, to one side or the other. And you will probably be surprised, if you've never had this kind of experience before, you will probably be surprised that suddenly the glass rings. You did not move your hand, but the hand has moved. Um, it's, it's a very simple exercise. You can really just get yes or no answers, but that's good enough to begin with. Um, you just have to be think about what questions you will ask. Um, so, that's the first exercise with the passive communication, the pendulum. So, month three. Now, we're going to be transferring our awareness for the first time into other things. You choose five objects, set them in front of you and try to place your awareness in the center point of each of these objects, one at a time. Um, it's best if you work with symmetrical objects at this point, um, although it's not as critical since you started with your own depth point, 
you already have the conceptual ability to find a depth point in an asymmetrical object, okay? So, at any rate, we're starting with symmetrical objects. It's really easy. And you're trying to, very much like the transference of awareness, you're transferring your awareness into the object's depth point. And this is different than simply transferring your awareness into an object. It's a different level of that object's uh, entire being, okay? So you really are seeing that object from the deepest inside point outwards. And you have power over or with that object as well. So, the next work, the work with the elements, we're uh, working with the air element now. And we're following the exact same process that we did with the fire element, drawing it into our body through pore breathing, projecting it out through the solar plexus, drawing it back in, and dispersing it. We're doing that, you know, inside our room, we're filling our room, and then we're doing it outside, we're filling it in, in open space, you know, learning to set the parameters and control the element. And again, you must feel the effects of the air element, you must feel suddenly lighter. <sighs> yeah, okay. Um, now, the passive communication, we're now going to move to using a Ouija board. If you've never used a Ouija board, it's very simple. You have, well, you can make your own, essentially, but buying a Ouija board is way easier. Uh, you have a little planchette. You can use that, or you can actually use a small, like a shot glass. Shot glass is perfect. I use that. I, Hell, I used a shot glass when I was a young boy with my mother. We used to communicate with spirits in that way. Anyway, um, you use the uh, planchette, the Ouija board thing, or uh, a shot glass, um, and you have letters that it can point to with a yes and a no, and all the letters and of the alphabet and numbers so that it can go and can spell things out for you and really give you a, a written message. You can have much more of a conversation this way than just a yes-no. Um, you can learn a lot more using um, a Ouija board. So, it's the same process. Your hand is on the planchette or shot glass or whatever you exteriorize it, you know, take the astromental hand out of it, so it's just the physical hand. You go to your depth point, so that you're in a trance, and you ask your questions and receive your answers. Of course, with the planchette, you really have to have your eyes open. So, you have to be able to go into your depth point with your eyes open, which should be no problem, it's no different than doing it with your eyes closed. You should be used by now, you know, in all the work you've done with the creative imagination, with your eyes closed and eyes open, to understand that the what you see in background, uh, other than your focal point of your eyes, is not a dis distraction. It doesn't have to distract you. That's by choice whether it distracts you or not, okay? So, passive communication using Ouija board. That's a lot of fun. It really is. So, month four. Um, <clears throat> you're going to be transferring your awareness into the depth point of all variety of asymmetrical objects, okay? So, just, you know, in your home, your own home, just start going to the depth point of all different things. And like the transference of awareness, this is very illuminating because it gives you a different perspective 
on the interior workings of everything. Now we're going to this month, month four, we're going to be working with the water element and doing the same routine with the water element. You know, sucking it in through our pores, projecting it through our solar plexus, drawing it back in, dispersing it, filling our room, um, going outside and filling a limited space, blah, blah, blah. And again, you have to feel the effects of what you are doing. The coldness of the water elements, fluidity, etc. Okay. Now, the passive communication, this time, uh, is sort of like the finger rituals, but it's sort of your secret uh, communications with your guardian genius that nobody else can see or witness. And it's, it's about having your guardian move your finger. Just move your finger. It's that simple. And it's the same with exteriorizing your hand, going into a trance, and asking your guardian to communicate with you. And so it moves your finger. Or it can move a variety of fingers. It depends. I mean, it's you can make those arrangements yourself. You know, move one finger to mean one thing, move another finger to mean another thing. It's up to you. Experiment around with it. But it's a different level of communication. It's sort of secret communication. <laughs> okay. So, month five, working, uh, okay, now you're going to transfer your awareness into objects, inanimate objects, and you are going to, while you are within that object, you're going to um, accumulate the elements. You're going to accumulate elements within that object from the depth point. Okay? So you are, in effect, influencing that object through its depth point. Now, you learn by this point that you can and how to influence your own self from your depth point. So it's just a matter of doing it from the inside of other things. <clears throat> so, that's an easy task. Now we'll work with the earth element in the same exact manner, you know, with the same requirements. And the passive communication this time is going to be about mediumistic writing. And that again, is your hand is holding a pen over some paper and you exteriorize your hand, go into your depth point and ask for communication. And, you know, your hand probably will start writing. You know, make that your intention that you your hand writes something out. <clears throat> and it's really best if you do that writing part of it with your eyes closed because you don't want to interfere, and it's kind of difficult at first not to interfere, especially with something as uniquely personal as writing, okay? So, now, month six, with the um, depth point, you are going to now start projecting your awareness into animals. So, you're going to have to do this outside. You know, if you have animals in your house, project into their depth point. But to really sufficiently do this enough, uh, with enough variety, a number of animals, and it's any kind of animal, uh, you know, an insect, a fish, um, a caterpillar, a snake, a bird, etc., um, the dog, the cat, um, you're going to project to their depth point, and eventually, once you get used to doing that, you're going to start accumulating elements and vital energy, etc., again, affecting them from the inside out. 
So you got to be careful. You don't want to do harm while you're experimenting. Um, so you might just breathe the element in, breathe it out. So there is no accumulation. Or if you know enough of what you are doing, you can, you know, definitely affect the animal um, with the elements from within, um, or vital energy. But, just be careful, be respectful. And, okay, here we are. The elements, Okay, now we're starting to work on different sorts of projection instead of just through the solar plexus. You're going to work with all the elements. Um, you're going to uh, the, uh, accumulate it by pore breathing, accumulate the elements, and then project them again throughout the whole body. Okay, so once you get used to projecting through the whole body, you then will start projecting through parts of your body, relying specific, you know, focusing specifically on the hands and fingers. You want to be able to project through your hands and fingers, okay? Should be very easy. It's just a matter of doing it in enough circumstances um, that it becomes very easy very quickly. And the passive communication now, for the next three months, is with other beings, other than your guardian genius. You still communicate with your guardian genius, but in these next three months, six, seven, and eight, you want to start working with communication with other beings. And it's the same process, except that you want to specify who you want to communicate with. You can just leave it open. You can leave yourself open to anybody, but that's a little risky, especially at this stage. It's a little risky. Not terribly risky, but a little risky. Um, so, you know, if you want to uh, talk to someone you know who has died, uh, that's a possibility. Um, you can also, through this method, uh, talk to the spirits of evocation. You know, the spirits listed in uh, Practice of Magical Evocation. Just any disembodied being that you wish to communicate with, you can try at least, you know. They might not be willing to communicate with you at this stage, but you can at least try to communicate with them. And you will succeed in the vast majority of cases. Okay? So, month seven. You are transferring to the depth point of humans. Now, just like with animals, it's a little more complicated with humans because they're, you know, we are humans, so... Um, there's preconceptions that enter in, uh, expectations. They have to all be let go of. You transfer into the depth point of the other human being. So some of this, a good portion of this, you're going to have to be doing outside, uh, in public. Okay? And that means by now you're going to get very good with just transferring instantly into somebody, you know, with your eyes open in the middle of you know, a restaurant or something like that. Um, without freaking them out because you're intensively staring at them or something like that. So you transfer into humans, any and all humans, and eventually you begin to influence them from within using the elements and the fluid, uh, the vital energy. Okay? So the practice with humans. And with the elements, Okay, you're going to be projecting the elements into specific shapes. So you're doing this through your solar plexus, and you're creating, say, a ball. That's the first thing you want to do. 
be able to project all four elements into the shape of a ball and of whatever size you want I suggest working with different sizes the smaller the more compressed the element is in fact you should start with a, an accumulation of such a size and shrink it down press it together as it were which makes the accumulation denser and denser more and more dynamic the smaller you get it okay and then continue on once you've mastered a ball work with different shapes a cube a square you know in various different shapes in other words it, you just want to get used to this projecting and confining the parameters of your projection and, and the passive communication it still continues with communicating with various beings I mean you have the technique now you are free to try to communicate with anybody um, now month eight um, <clears throat> the transference of awareness must now be done at a distance so you're not actually staring at the thing or person or animal or plant or whatever that you're transferring your awareness into you are imagining them these might be in fact it's probably uh, best if they are uh, people and things that you know that are you are familiar with um, that actually exist in other words and not purely imaginary uh, transfer into their depth point and affect them you know this is what you do from a distance so you have a friend in another town you transfer your awareness into their depth point and affect them from within and this you have to learn this uh, this is going to be so invaluable in the future because you're not always going to be you know right there with someone you want to assist okay and this is how you learn to do it uh, okay now uh, ah okay now with the elements we're going to learn how to just draw them directly from the universe to you know be an object in front of us to fill something that we want to fill with an anim an element um, so just take it from the universe directly and then release it back to the universe and you should experiment in this releasing process either let it just dissipate gently or explode you know and that works best with the small dense forms that exploded into the universe it can be very dramatic okay you're going to do it with any and all forms floating in the air before you etc fill your room directly from the universe keep filling it until it is a really dense accumulation that you definitely feel the effects of and then release it from the room the good exercises to do and that breaks that habit we have by now of always drawing the elements or the flu the uh, vital energy through our body and then projecting it we don't need to do that that is how we have learned to do it at times that we want to do it because we want to put our own imprint on uh, what we are doing with the element or vital energy but in other times we don't want our input we don't want that karmic connection to the element or the vital energy that we're using okay and this is how you sidestep uh, that major karmic connection that occurs when you project an element you know having taken it through your own body 
Okay, so that's that's eight to ten months of your time now. And wow, you, I know you guys are just going to learn so much from this experience. Especially the depth point work. That's really going to take you forward. And the work with projecting the elements. This is something you need to know. And it's a matter of practicing. Getting used to it. You know, building that muscle. Uh, building the concepts that uh, enable you to project the elements as if they were physical things. Because ultimately you're going to be creating well, physical effects. You feel the heat, you feel the cold, etc. And the passive communication, I mean, this is, this is very interesting work. It's very educational. It can be very educational. So, I leave you there to uh, go at it and do it. Good luck. Lots of luck. Man, I'll see you on the other end and talk to you about step six next. Bye-bye. Thank mm -hmm. you.